is your piriformis muscle pinching or compressing your sciatic nerve? This guy right here, highlighted in red, catches a lot of flack and is said to be the reason for why a lot of people experience butt pain uh, as well as leg pain, numbness, and tingling because this the piriformis muscle highlighted in red uh, sits directly on top of the sciatic nerve. So is your piriformis muscle compressing or pinching your sciatic nerve? In this video, I want to reveal what the science suggests as well as what my experience suggests. Um, I don't claim to know everything, but I definitely have a specialty in this area. So again, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I am a physical therapist. Appreciate you checking out my channel. I'm residency trained. I have my board specialty uh, in orthopedics. This places my knowledge and experience in the top 0.5% of PTs in the United States, all right? Um, and I share that to let you know that this, uh, the answer to this question comes from a place of living and being in the trenches and working with people with back button sciatic issues. Uh, to date, I've seen over 10,000 people with back butt sciatica pains, okay? So you're here uh, because you have some pain in the butt. It may also go down the leg. Maybe you have some numbness or tingling or something like that. Uh, and you probably are wondering if your piriformis muscle uh, is the cause of uh, your sciatica, right? Maybe you've been told you have piriformis syndrome or other things, and you have this question and or this fear, worry, belief that the piriformis is in somehow, some way uh, pinching your sciatic nerve. So uh, let's chat about this, right? So first things first, what is this definition of piriformis syndrome? It says here, uh, according to the Cleveland Clinic, piriformis syndrome causes pain, numbness, uh, pain or numbness in your butt, hip, or upper leg. It occurs when the piriformis muscle presses on the sciatic nerve. So you can see that that muscle that I showed you a moment ago gets blamed for the cause of piriformis syndrome. It defines piriformis syndrome, right? Uh, from WebMD, what is piriformis syndrome? It's a rare disorder of the nerves and muscles. When you have it, your piriformis muscle, a flat band-like muscle located deep in your buttock, near the top of your hip, presses on the sciatic nerve. So it almost seems like uh, the muscle pressing on your sciatic nerve is required in order for you to have this syndrome, right? But is this really true, right? And should you be concerned or worry about it? Beliefs inform actions, which inform results. This is really important because if your belief is that your piriformis muscle is pinching your sciatic nerve, then what's going to happen? You're going to try to unpinch it. And so uh, what will happen is you will uh, embark upon a journey to do so and uh, take on treatments or try on treatments that you believe will lengthen it, loosen it up, decompress it, right? And it leads to lots of questions. How do you know if you have this belief? Because you might be thinking like, hey, do I need surgery to release my piriformis muscle? Should I get an injection to relax the muscle? If it's too tight or taut, right, do I need to relax it? Should I try stretching it out so I can loosen it up? And if I loosen it up, well, then it won't compress or pinch the sciatic nerve, right? Should I massage it and try to release the tension? If the belief is that the piriformis is pinching the sciatic nerve, that informs your actions, which means that you will go down the path of, you know, getting involved with treatments aimed to sort of unpinch it, relax it, loosen it, et cetera, right? But could you be barking up the wrong tree? So the piriformis muscle is always pressing on the sciatic nerve in some way, shape, or form. That's just a newsflash. That's a fact. That's something I want to let you in on. All right. So to be clear, 100% of people now, 100%, maybe not. Let's not live in absolutes here. Let's say 98% of people have a piriformis muscle that is anatomically positioned such that it is contacting the sciatic nerve. So you can see here again, I showed you this earlier, right? Here is the muscle. Here is the nerve. And it's positioned such that it sits or presses on that nerve directly piriformis muscle sits right on top of the sciatic nerve, which is that big nerve right there outlined in yellow. And many radiological as well as gross uh, dissection studies have been uh, performed to kind of determine the various ways that the nerve might be oriented in relation to this muscle. So you can see type one right here. Uh, this is the most common uh, presentation, if you will. We just saw that in the previous picture. So right there, that nerve is coming out from beneath the piriformis muscle itself. Type two, you can see that um, part of the sciatic nerve actually splits through or pierces through the piriformis. Uh, type three, you can see that it comes over the top. Type four, pierces through completely. Part of it, another part of it, or another branch of sciatic nerve pierces through it, the other over top. And then, hey, maybe there's uh, a situation type uh, what is that, type six? Yeah, type six, uh, that uh, the, the nerve actually sort of compresses the piriformis, right? But still is, uh, is contacting it. When it comes to the relationship of the piriformis muscle to the sciatic nerve, type one uh, sort of describes uh, most people, the majority of people, right? So chances are, if you're watching this, right, and you fit into the majority of folks, uh, then you will have a piriformis muscle uh, that is sitting on top of uh, your sciatic nerve, right? And about 15% of folks will have the other types combined. But the percentage of people who have a piriformis muscle 
contacting the sciatic nerve is 100%, regardless of the uh, anatomical variation that may or may not be present, whether you fit in the 85% or the 15%, everyone has, or the vast majority, let's just say, pretty much everybody has, a piriformis muscle that is in some way, shape, or form contacting or touching or pressing or whatever you want to call it on the sciatic nerve. 100% of people, just for some clean math. Right? There might be one or two people out of 100, all right? but you get the idea. But what's interesting is though, even though everyone has a nerve which touches the piriformis, whether it be laid on top or it pierces through or something like that, right? Look at the number of, uh, of people or the percentage of the population that experiences piriformis syndrome. Evidence suggests somewhere between three to 6% of people um, you know, will have piriformis syndrome causing a pain in their butt. But the rest of the world, even though their sciatic nerve is still being pressed on by their piriformis, don't experience pain, right? So maybe you're saying, and I'll clear this up here in a little bit, but maybe you're, you're saying, well, maybe I'm one of those people, right? Maybe I'm the exception. I'm in the 15% of folks where the sciatic nerve actually pierces through the piriformis muscle. And wow, that could be pinched, Charlie, right? The, the nerve's going through and potentially it's being pinched in some way, shape, or form. So again, maybe you're not the type one, but you're type two, type three, type four, type five, type six. Maybe you're in that sort of special uh, subgroup. And so we've done, again, radiologic studies to look at this. Is it painful to be different, right? A lot of times in medicine, we want to take little differences or variations in the way that we're shaped or, uh, you know, the way our bones are structured, the length of our legs, et cetera. And we want to medicalize it. We want to blame that thing, that difference, that anomaly for the reason why we hurt. But is it just because we're paid to do so? Is it just because you went somewhere, you hurt, and that person is trying to give you a reason as to why you might hurt, right? Uh, as humans, we are problem solvers at heart. And so we're looking always to figure out why we hurt. But is it painful to be different? So this study, right, looked at sciatic nerve anatomical variance in relation to the piriformis muscle, right? And then piriformis syndrome, like pain, right, issues. And conclusions. So there were no significant differences in the prevalence of piriformis syndrome buttock pain or sciatica between normal and variant sciatic nerve anatomy. This large scale correlative radiologic study into the relationship between sciatic nerve variants and piriformis syndrome calls into question this relationship, right? So many people say, okay, well, um, I get Charlie that the piriformis muscle is constantly pressing on in everybody is sitting on top of, when I say everybody, 85% uh, of folks, uh, type one in this picture, um, and okay, maybe that's the normal, but maybe I'm sort of abnormal and I'm type two through six and I've got something else going on, right? And that's why I hurt. Well, we found no correlation. You could have the sciatic nerve piercing through the piriformis and we didn't find that people who had that hurt any more than the people who had sort of the normal variant. So is your piriformis muscle pressing your sciatic nerve? Absolutely. And it does not 100% of people. And it doesn't matter if it goes through it or runs underneath it or runs over it, right? Almost 100% of people, and I say almost because I'm sure there's one person you could argue out there has some funky absence of a piriformis muscle or something like that. But everybody, right, has a piriformis muscle that sits on top of the sciatic nerve. And only 3 to 6% of people, right, have a problem due to it. We call it piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome is supposedly due to the sciatic nerve, right, being compressed or pinched by the piriformis muscle, but everybody has a piriformis muscle sitting on or pressing on the sciatic nerve and only three to 6% of people have it. And even if it's piercing through the sciatic nerve, piercing through the piriformis muscle, we don't see that it increases the amount of pain that people experience. So is your piriformis muscle pressing your sciatic nerve? Yes, you would be normal, absolutely, all right? But that doesn't mean it needs to be medicalized. It doesn't mean it has to be painful or problematic. In fact, it would be normal, it would be abnormal to not have contact between your piriformis muscle and the sciatic nerve, right? So you now might be saying, well, Dr. Charlie, if it's normal, why do I hurt, right? It's a good question, right? Because you're really here probably not because you want to answer that question, uh, maybe so, but you, you want some solution, right? You want to better understand why you hurt, okay? The simple answer is there are many causes that a pain in the butt and or leg or back might occur, all right? So piriformis syndrome may be one of them, but very rare right? Um, now, deep gluteal syndrome, as you'll see in a minute, is kind of the more, um, I guess, accepted definition of piriformis syndrome. But SI joint issues can cause pain in the butt. Hip joint issues can cause pain in the, the butt, uh, the outside of the hip, the groin. Disc issues are the number one cause of sciatica. So a problem at L4, L5, L5, S1, something like that. A disc issue, a herniated disc, extruded disc, some disc issue. Facet joint problems, spondylolisthesis, arthritis, stuff like that. So joints in the spine can also 
irritate structures, which can refer into the buttock. By the way, um, if you're interested in learning more about how you can determine, you know, if you have an SI joint issue or hip joint issue or disc issue, facet joint issue, piriformis syndrome, um, then go ahead and check out or download for free my better than an MRI DIY diagnostic guide. I outline my entire decision-making framework so that you can have it all. Um, I call it better than an MRI because at the end of the day, we want to take into account your story, where you hurt, and then some simple self-movement tests that you can do to determine what the heck is going on. All right. So check out that DIY diagnostic guide, download it for free. All right. Now, why do I hurt? There could be many causes, right, um, as to the, the source of your pain. Um, but you may also, um, you know, be saying, well, if my piriformis muscle isn't pinching my sciatic nerve, then what is piriformis syndrome? Why are people telling me that I have it or maybe suggesting or why am I looking it up, right, uh, and, and finding also information on it? Uh, what is piriformis syndrome? Let's go back to the definition. Piriformis syndrome is a rare disorder of the nerves and muscles. When you have it, your piriformis muscle, a flat band-like muscle located in your butt near the top of your hip presses on the sciatic nerve. When you remove presses on the sciatic nerve, then it's almost as if piriformis syndrome ceases to exist. Hmm. So what are we really dealing with, right? It calls into question the entire definition, which is piriformis syndrome, right? So what is it? And what does the science say about it? Right? We've got the piriformis muscle. There's a type one, the sciatic nerve coming below it. The definition of piriformis syndrome is, let me just be super straight up, clear as mud. And as an expert in this field and in this area, um, the, the, the research is, is uh, pretty conclusive that uh, we, we don't exactly have a super clear idea of what it is. Um, and instead, we call it a diagnosis of exclusion. So here's what some of the research suggests. All right, let me just read these. Piriformis syndrome is a controversial cause of glute pain. Again, six to eight percent in this study, as far as the the prevalence of or how common it is, right? Um, and you can see, right, the challenge surrounding the diagnosis and treatment of piriformis syndrome is to distinguish it from from the other overlapping symptoms seen in other disorders involving the spine, hip, and pelvis. So, ruling those things out. Once you rule those things out, then this is what's left. If it's not the spine, if it's not the hip, if it's not the pelvis, if it's not the SI joint, if it's not something else, boom. Diagnosis of exclusion, piriformis syndrome, and that's how we arrive at it. Piriformis syndrome is solely a clinical diagnosis. It's a form of deep gluteal syndrome that needs to be considered on the differential of low back pain. It comprises just between 0.3, they say here, to 6%. Right? So a lot of people are going to have a pain in the butt, but piriformis syndrome is actually a very rare cause of it. And usually there are other things which are more common, um, which would cause the buttock pain. All right. So again, we want to rule things out differentially. It could be this, it could be this, it could be this. If we rule those things out, then there's a higher likelihood that it's piriformis syndrome. Okay. Piriformis syndrome is a clinical diagnosis. Right? So there is no gold standard in the diagnosis of piriformis syndrome. So lots of folks come and they say, Dr. Charlie, I had an MRI, right? And it shows my one piriformis is bigger than the other, or shows that it's smaller than the other, right? And so we try to take a picture of this thing to explain and or to diagnose uh, why we might hurt. Uh, but there is no gold standard. We don't see piriformis syndrome um, on, on a, an MRI, right? And would it be helpful to see that your piriformis is sitting on top of your sciatic nerve? Probably not, because it is for everybody and not everybody hurts, only a small percentage do. So is that really the, the case, right? So to be clear, here is the, the best definition of piriformis syndrome I can come up with, okay? Is a rare three to 6% or 0.3 to 6%, all right? We'll just say 6% max. Cause of deep buttock pain, caused by something deep in the buttock that may or may not be irritating the sciatic nerve. Think back to that picture that I showed you, the, the dissection picture. Did you see all those different structures, all kinds of different muscles, all kinds of different ligaments, the hip joint, all of that stuff, which may or may not be irritating the sciatic nerve, of which all other more common or more likely causes, more probable causes have been ruled out. This becomes a diagnosis of exclusion. Again, it's very rare much more common that something else is causing the buttock pain, leg pain, et cetera, All right? There are many structures besides just the piriformis that more commonly cause pain in this area, which is why many people, including myself, would refer to it more as like a deep gluteal syndrome. There's something deep in the buttock that's pretty darn rare, right? That's irritating something there. Could be many things and many things are more likely. So we have to rule out those things before we just say, hey, it's piriformis problem or it's a deep glute problem. So look, we went through this conversation because you probably had a question about and or a belief of, hey, my piriformis is in some way, shape or form compressing or pinching my sciatic nerve. And this belief informs your actions, which informs your results, right? Which means that you're probably trying to unpinch it. But now you understand some of the science, 
I'm giving you permission to stop trying to unpinch it. What do I mean by it? And what does that look like? What that looks like is not foam rolling, not trying to, to uh, tennis ball massage it, not sitting on any more spiky objects, right? Not having someone dig their elbow into your buttock, not trying to relax it in various different ways, not taking muscle relaxers. Think if you just loosen that thing up and make it all wiggly, right? That it'll release your sciatic nerve. And so if we've shifted that belief based off this conversation, based off some of the evidence in my experience, which I hope I have, then we can change our actions. We're no longer doing those things, which will change your results. And the reason this, again, is valuable is because if the belief is that your piriformis is pinching or compressing your sciatic nerve, it's a very small chance. And we're having a hard time, as you can see, in the medical community, really defining what that is. Then if you roll on a tennis ball, if you foam roll, if you're constantly stretching, pulling, poking, prodding, jabbing this thing with needles, then you could potentially just continue to irritate the problem, which reinforces your belief that something's pinched in there because the pain gets worse. Piriformis lays right over top of the sciatic nerve. Everybody has a piriformis laying on top of the sciatic nerve. Very few people have symptoms. Do you know what nerves like? Nerves enjoy movement, but they don't enjoy extreme tension, stretching, or prolonged excessive repetitive compression. As little as 8% stretch to a sensitive sciatic nerve can reduce blood supply to it. As little as 16% stretch to the sciatic nerve can completely cut off the blood supply. Right? And when you're in pain, if there's some type of irritation or inflammation in that area, there may or there may not be. And what happens when you cut off the blood supply? You reduce the oxygen and the nutrients because the blood carries those things to the area of injury. And this is oftentimes why we see that belief backfires on people because they're constantly trying to massage, foam roll, et cetera, and it's making them worse. Now, if you're watching this, and you're like, okay, well, if I don't have piriformis syndrome, I created basically a six-step sort of diagnostic process. Obviously, you can check out the DIY diagnostic guide, but I'm going to put here on the end screen to uh, check out this other video uh, where I lay out a step-by-step, six-step sort of uh, diagnostic framework. Uh, where we start by ruling things out. Remember, diagnosis of exclusion. So six arrives you, step six arrives you at piriformis syndrome or deep gluteal syndrome as the most likely, most probable cause of your symptoms. Having said that, you must rule out number one, big, ugly, scary things, cancers, fractures, tumors, infections. Very rare, but still need to rule that out. The second thing is, are your symptoms of the mind or of the body? Do we need to look at this psychologically or physiologically? Well, there's a process for doing so. And there's some resources within that video that you can check out, all right? Third step, is it the back? We know that disc problem is the number one cause of sciatica and back problems are much more likely to cause pain in the butt and the leg than piriformis syndrome itself. So again, we're looking at this as far as probabilities and we're working down the line to arrive at the conclusion of piriformis deep glute syndrome, right? After we roll out the back, the SI joint by going through some simple tests, right? Then we can roll out the hip joint by going through some different movement tests and answering some basic questions. Then we can roll out the hamstring. Then we can rule in if the sciatic nerve is sensitive or not. And then we can arrive at, hey, is this a problem deep in my glutes or not based off of one, two, three, four, and five. So check out that video. Uh, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Again, comment below with any thoughts, uh, questions, or concerns. Thanks, everyone. Dr. Charlie Chessie.